narcissist and alcohol. And if you're new here, I have narcissistic personality disorder. So as you know, a lot of narcissistic people become narcissists because they experience trauma in their childhood some way, shape or form. And as adults, we repress that trauma. We don't want to go through it. So a lot of narcissistic people will turn to alcohol as a vice to escape, to run away from that trauma as another way to not deal with it. So when you see a narcissistic person drinking or a toxic person drinking, sometimes it's just literally just to escape some type of trauma, but that does not excuse them from treating you terribly or becoming alcoholic and raging out on you and things like that. And every alcoholic is not a narcissist. And another thing, if you get a narcissist drinking, when they get a couple of shots in them, when they're not drunk, when the walls come down, that's who they really are. That's when the ego has kind of stepped aside and let that real person shine through. But if they get super drunk, you get the rage monster, you get the slurs, you get the cussing, you get all that. So alcohol can be an escape for narcissists. What is going on, beautiful people? Welcome to another episode of A Narcissist Explains. I am self-aware diagnosed narcissist Lee Hammock, and I use my platform on social media to raise awareness for narcissistic personality disorder, get more people into therapy, and also validate the victims and survivors of this disorder as well. This series, I take my TikTok, YouTube shorts, make them longer. That's all it's about. They 60 seconds, I'm going to make them longer right here. So the one you just watched was about alcohol and narcissism. So let me preface it. As I said in that video, as I said in the TikTok or the YouTube short or whatever, all alcoholics are not narcissists. I just, you know, I know that. You know that. We know that. We're talking about the correlation between nar that narcissistic people like myself have and alcohol and other substances and things like that. You know what I mean? So the, the, the question was, is there a connection between alcohol abuse and narcissistic behavior? And I, so I do one-on-ones over Zoom when I'm talking to different people about their situations when they're dealing with a narcissist or a toxic person or whatever. So this comes up a lot. So do I drink? Yes, I, I drink, but I am not an alcoholic. But this is the reason. So a lot of narcissists are narcissists and toxic people because of the trauma that we experienced in, in our youth, right? So when we are we we experience that trauma, sometimes we want to run away from that trauma. Sometimes we want to get away from that trauma or escape that trauma or not deal with it. Push it to push it to the back of our minds. Not deal with the trauma, not deal with anything like that. We just want to push it away, get rid of it, be done with it and as a whole. But sometimes it doesn't work out that way when you're dealing with a narc like when you when we you know substances like alcohol allow us that that brief escape from it so me i'm not an alcoholic so but i do have an addictive personality and a lot of narcissistic people have addictive personalities which is why when they get when they turn to alcohol as a vice to escape their traumas they get addicted to it they become their addiction when they turn to other substances like you know other recreational drugs and stuff like that prescription drug, drugs and stuff like that that's why they become addicted to them very easily. So not only are they not only are some of these some of these substances that they take addictive, you also have an addictive personality. So that makes it twice as hard to fight it off. You know what I mean? Especially once you get that escape, once you get that high and things like that. So as a narcissist, like when I drank, like when I get when, it, when most narcissists, the people get drunk to the point where they're just like sloppy drunk. They, you get the rage monster. You get the insults. You get the the terrible commentary. You get all the bad stuff coming from them. And it doesn't matter what relationship you have with them. It could be your mom. It could be your dad. It could be your boyfriend, girlfriend, sister, aunt, cousin, whatever, husband, wife, whatever. The relationship, the relationship dynamic is unimportant. The narcissist is going to lash out at whoever is around them. You're going to get the, the like I call it the, the narcissistic rage monster. You're going to get that rage monster. They're going to rage out on you, and they're going to make your life tough. They're going to make your life hard because their life is hard. They they're going to, all the all the insecurities and all the insecurities and projections that we feel is coming out on you. Any kind of negative thought that we thought about you is going to come out. And I know a drunk person's thoughts or a sober person's words or whatever. A drunk person's words or a sober person's thoughts. That is that that is one hundred percent true. When you're dealing with a narcissist. So when I drink, listen, I don't drink to get drunk because I know when I get drunk, I know the rage monster. I know my limits. Therapy has helped me learn my limits, y'all. I know not to push those limits and not to push those boundaries to the point where I'm going to make myself a problem for everybody else around me. So what I've learned to do now is to just, you know, I take a couple of shots. Like when you see a narcissist take a couple of shots, like one or two drinks in where they're just tipsy, they're not drunk. 
that's I, I like to think that's who we really are. That's the real person because when we take a couple of shots, the boundaries go down, the walls go down. We kind of you get to peek behind the curtain of the who that narcissist really is. So when you get to peek behind the curtain, you might see like me when I'm tipsy. I'm fun. I'm loving. I'm interactive. I'm dancing. I'm yeah. You know, I'm a good. I, I feel like a better person. So I like to feel that way, y'all. I like that feeling because when I'm sober. I'm, you know, I have my insecurities are right on, you know, my ego, I'm fra fragile ego, I'm worried about rejection, I'm worried about all that stuff, but when I get a couple of shots in, or just a couple of drinks or whatever, I'm just not drunk, I'm just chill, I love that feeling, it allows me to feel, I feel like a human being, a, a human, human, human being, <laughs> is that an E, human, no, <laughs> a human being, so I feel like alive. I feel like a regular person. So it allows me to kind of like escape the, the way I feel about myself, the insecurities. The wall goes down and I feel good. I feel like a regular person. I feel like, like I said, I feel, and I like that feeling. So I would carry a flask around with me all the time full of you know, just alcohol. So I could just take a couple of shots throughout the day just so I can lower my walls down. When I'm getting ready to go to an event or I'm getting ready to speak to people. Or sometimes when I get ready to go live, or if I'm on live, y'all see me go off the camera? I'm taking a shot or something like that sometimes. But I'm, if you if you watch me on live and I go off the camera, I'm usually taking a taking a swig, so because it helps me lower my inhibitions, it helps me take the wall down, and it helps me respond to people, and just you know be help, help. I feel like it helps me be more present. And I feel like alcohol might be the same for your narcissistic person in your life, your toxic person. A little bit of it helps you be more present. But as time goes on, you drink more. It takes like as time goes on, if you drink every single day. It takes your, 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 um, you know how alcohol works. Your, your threshold goes, it gets higher. Your, um, your tolerance gets higher. So it takes more to get to that point. It takes more to get there. If you, if you want to feel that way for a longer period of time, you have to do it throughout the day. And some people don't like liquor, so they drink beer. You know what I mean? So you're drinking beer throughout the day, it's going to affect your body. I hear stories from people on my Zoom and it, 24 beers a day. I'm like, what in the hell are you running from? Like, what kind of trauma are you running away from? 24 beers a day? Like, good, dear God. 24? 24 beers. What? <laughs> but I'm just like, so what are, what are they trying to escape from? We don't want the process. We don't want to deal with it. So we're trying to escape something. You know what I mean? Why are you smoking that? Why are you popping that? Why are you injecting that? Because they're trying to escape the reality. And like I said, just because you do that stuff, it does not necessarily make you a narcissist. You could just be an addict. But both things could also be true. You could be a narcissist and an addict at the same time, you know. But like me, like I said, when you drink over a long period of time, extend you extended period of time, it takes you longer. It takes more to get to that point. It takes more to get to that point where the boundaries are, you know, drop and you feel normal. So you go overboard sometimes, and you, you get the rage monster more times than not because you're trying to get to that point. And you want to get there faster, so you're throwing it down faster. And you, here comes the narcissistic rage monster. We're trying to push that stuff away. We're trying to run away from stuff like that. And that's why I feel like I really don't feel the need to drink a whole bunch no more because I'm facing my trauma and stuff head on in therapy, step by step, baby steps, you know, little by little. I'm facing my trauma, my traumatic experiences. I'm facing that head on. I'm dealing with it, you know, in therapy. Every single time I go to therapy, I'm dealing with this stuff. I'm fighting it. I'm, you know, I'm battling against this stuff right here. So I'm, you know, I'm processing it. I have to, this is how, to ha how I have to live my life. This is who I'm going to have to be. Perfect. Let me go ahead and fight this stuff. And a lot of narcissistic people, when you ask them what's wrong with them, then there's nothing wrong with them. I don't, I'm not, I don't, I don't, I'm not an alcoholic. They're, they're, they're not a narcissistic alcoholic people will fight against you and battle against you to keep the, to keep that vice. Because if they gonna take if you take away that one vice, they have to find another one. They have to find something to fill that hole. And you are trying you as a survivor or victim or the person that's in the relationship or the son, daughter, mother, father, whatever the relationship is, you are trying to fill that hole for them. You try to take that vice from them, but there's nothing but there's nothing to you know, if they're not going to face that trauma head on, if you take that advice from them, if they stop drinking, they'll probably become more angry and agitated with you very more, easier. A narcissist is in, in AA is going to be a dangerous person because they look, they lose that advice. Like, I can't drink anymore. So it's your fault. I can't drink anymore. It's your fault. I feel this way. So they'll, they'll start to blame you because they're trying to get better for you. So they'll blame you for taking that advice away from them. And sometimes you get a, you get a very high functioning alcoholic person. You get that a lot of times when you deal with narcissists too. You get that high functioning narcissistic alcoholic person, and it sucks and it's a lot to deal with. But like, if you stay with this person, this is something. 
I mean, I feel like you have. This is your future. I believe. Mean, look into your future right here. Look into this crystal ball of narcissism, and you know, you see that they're going to be drunk for a long time because they're running away from something. And if the, and until they face that trauma, they're going to progressively get worse with the alcoholism um, and things like that. Until they face that trauma head on, what it, I mean, you can ask people, you can ask them, you know, like, what are you running, what, what are you running away from? And they'll say nothing. I'm not running from anything, or I don't want to talk about it, or I don't want to deal with it. And you, why don't you go to therapy? Nope. This is my therapy. Therapy is my bottle. So it's the advice that's trying to escape y'all. Anyway, y'all, I hope y'all enjoyed this episode. Like and subscribe for more live show coming soon. Starting a live show next week. I'm getting everything in order for it. So live show coming soon. Going to have guests on every single day. Like and subscribe for more. And my wife is starting a live show too. So thank y'all. Peace.